Okay, we're here. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Shiksa. And I'm the Urban Girl, and we're here to talk about pets. Because we love pets, and we don't just love them for their own little furriness. We love them for what, what they provide. Yeah. And what we provide back, but what they provide yes. to us. So, one of the things we've been talking about was, is, that in a world where we're so busy and we're so disengaged, mm -hmm. and that there's a purpose in having a wonderful, loving critter in our life. And we were just looking for the exact quote, but we can't find it, but it has to do with pets remind us on a daily basis that there is a big, important, much bigger than our little lives, yeah. nature out there. They are the bridge to that. And there's no way we can only stay disengaged in our own intellect or our own busyness if you own a pet. Right. And we happen to be people who love dogs. So for us to not have dogs in our own homes would be crazy. Yes. And if we didn't, we would be very deprived. Right. So when people say to me, well, I don't know if I want a dog and there's dog poop in the yard and all the responsibility. Right. And they do get fleas. Sure. And you get fleas too sometimes. <laughs> and I think, well, yeah, so what's the big deal? It's a burden that for me is wonderful. And you know one of the things that I've, I've realized is that there are a couple of people who I've known over the years who were so resistant to having an animal. And maybe they got into, a, it's happened with a client of mine. He got into a relationship with a girl, a woman, mm -hmm. who has a dog. He didn't care about dogs. They didn't really like dogs. They smell. They're messy. They track shit into the house, but, <laughs> but he's crazy. He says, well, you know, it's just this dog. Well, guess what? He didn't get the memo. It's not just that dog. It's the experience of getting close to an animal. And what Dane is describing is before he found that out, he had a sense of privation, which means he doesn't even know he's missing something in his life that he couldn't even begin to address. Mm -hmm. So now if he were to be taken away from that dog, he would be deprived. And it's important to us to talk about this today because that bridge to nature, that expansive way of engaging in the world is of an essence, we believe. Mm -hmm. And you may not know that if you don't have a pet. Right. Now, not all people want animals. And that's fine. We think they're crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> it's okay if you don't want one. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well, I don't really understand those people. Neither do you, right? I and don't manage, know We don't really get no. it. However, <laughs> However, they're not going to come to our houses because <laughs> they want the dogs to be outside. And we would say, what do you mean you want the dog outside? <laughs> I live in the Santa Monica Mountains where we're shooting this right now. Everybody has dogs. Once in a while, if you're hiking along and you see somebody who just the person on their own, we go, your dog is missing. <laughs> your dog ran away. You know, I think what we think, those of us who are real pet lovers, feel that if you are the kind of person who doesn't like an animal, it's only because you haven't had the right experience yet. <laughs> And we can actually change that. And to hear a therapist say that, we can change because we're telling people all the time, you can't change another person. We know we can change you that can. in you. And your life will be better, really. <laughs> and this is one of the reasons why therapy dogs are obviously growing yes. and growing and growing. And I have a therapy dog in my office. And, and in nursing homes and convalescent homes. Uh, that, people do better. They heal yes, better. Yes, and they're allowing people, often not a big dog, but a small dog or a cat, mm -hmm. because our bodies produce oxytocin, which is a bonding hormone, with our pets and with animals, just like mothers and infants do. Mm -hmm. So we feel better when we're bonded. Mm -hmm. Like Dana and I, the chicks and the urban girl. Yeah, you're my, pet. Oh, you're my pet. You're my pet. And they do this um, in hospitals mm -hmm. where, and in children's hospitals in Los Angeles, where they have people who are training their dogs yes. to be good I don't know, healthcare workers, yeah. they come in, you can bring your dog into the hospital yeah. and they'll visit with the kids who are there. And it makes sense. And these dogs are getting, big dogs, yes. getting on the bed. The dogs are trained yeah. not to get all tangled in all kinds of important, yeah. you know, machinery. Mm -hmm. And the kids just feel so, like yeah. it normalizes life. And it, it reminds them, besides the fluorescent light or what they're in there for, what their illness is, there's a bridge. That animal in the room is a bridge to the bigger world. 
So when Dana and I decided to talk about pets today, I just want to let you know how meaningful they are in our lives and hope that they are in yours and if they're not yet. Now I want to add something before you finish. We were reading quotes and there was a funny quote from Jerry Seinfeld. However, it's the same thing that my friend said to me years ago <laughs> that I remembered. She said, do you realize that if I'm gone for eight hours mm -hmm. or if I go get the mail, mm -hmm. I get the same greeting from my yeah. dog, which is, <gasps> hello, oh my God, where have you been? I'm so glad you're home. Oh my God, it's you, it's you. And to have that experience uh, mm -hmm. that there is a critter in the world that's not a person yeah. who's looking at you yeah. with such delight <laughs> and excitement that you exist. And on the other hand, my sister sent me an email years ago that says, Remember, you're not as great as your dog thinks you are. <laughs> I think you are. Thank you. You I are think too. you are. Get and a so dog. So are you. Get a dog. We think you should get a rescue a dog. Yes. Bye. Bye.